Hello, and welcome back to Gunfighter Life, the podcast where we talk about gunfighting the right way from a Judeo Christian worldview and real world first hand experience. Today is a short episode on a single cartridge. I'm very blessed with experience and knowledge, and I try to pass it on, and it seems like these cartridge talks are some of the favorite ones. So, since I mostly do this to give you guys information, I'll give you what you want. Roll into a quick abbreviated bio and then into the main topic. I am your host Michael Melito. First and foremost, I am a Christian and I don't apologize for that. God is number one and I want to recognize that. I'm a combat veteran of the United States Marine Corps. A couple of combat tours in Iraq, I was an urban warfare instructor for the Marine Corps. I also served in the United States Army. I also served with LAPD. I'm a state rifle and pistol champion a few times over, a professional big game hunter and guide, FBI certified firearms instructor. Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Psalm 144. With that, let's get into today's topic, guys. Today I'm going to talk about a wildcat cartridge. A wildcat so wild I can't even find it on my reloading manual. The 6mm 223 or the 6x45mm. Now, as I've talked about in other episodes, if you don't know, a lot of the very popular cartridges we have today started out as Wildcats. 270, the 243, the 6 just to name a few. What will happen is they'll take a very common, popular cartridge like the 30 6 the 308, the 8mm Mauser. And then they'll do what's called necking it up or necking it down. And by that necking it up and necking it down, I mean they take a smaller or larger caliber for what it was originally intended for. That's the case here today. The 223, most of you guys who are listening to this are familiar with the 223.556. I won't get into the difference between the nuances in those cases, but let's say for practical purposes, consider them the same cartridge. External dimensions are the same. Internals are a little bit different. But most of you guys are familiar with the AR-15. It's the most common rifle in America from what I've heard. The 223, the 556, therefore, is a very, very popular cartridge. But one of the things that holds it back is the light bullets. And you may not always want a light bullet. Heavier bullets are good for a lot of things. They're good for barrier penetration. They're good for putting living things in the dirt. The 6mm 223, or the 6x45mm, whatever you want to call it, is basically taking 223 and necking it up to 6mm. Now, 6mm, you're probably familiar with that in the 243. That's probably the most common cartridge that uses the 6mm size bullets. And for good reason. It's a great hunting cartridge. I think I have taken with. I may have taken more animals with a pistol, but with a rifle, I think I've taken more deer and elk and other things with a 243 than pretty much anything else. And uh, 243 is a great round. It's a it's a great for medium sized game. And since it's been around so long and it's so popular, you really get a lot of good bullet selection in that six millimeter category. Generally, 75 grains to 100 grains, you can get a little bit lighter, a little bit heavier. But where that really shines is necking up that 223. You can get a heavier bullet than you normally could. You can get a 100 grain bullet or even heavier, which I think would do better for a couple of things. It would do better at hitting well at long range, better ballistic coefficients. It would do better at, depending on bullet selection and... uh you know a bunch of other factors but it has great long range performance the six millimeter in fact they just came out with a six millimeter Creedmoor not too long ago which is the the six five Creedmoor neck down to six millimeter but you could also neck up the 223 and fit it in a regular size AR-15 and you get a heavier bullet good for stopping game good and put for things in the dirt good for a heavier hitting round and you can do it, like I said, in just just an AR-15 with just a barrel swap. It would take the same magazines. It would take the same bolt. All you would need is a new barrel. 
you get a bigger, heavier bullet with far better downrange performance, far better long-range performance, far better trajectory anyway than you would with something like a 300 Blackout. And the reason I brought this up is there's a lot of talk about a new cartridge in the military. You know, this cartridge, that cartridge, going back to 308. And I like 308. It's a good round. I have, uh, actually I have, I think, well, it's a tie between 223 and, and 308 the rifles I have chambered in the most. But it's a great caliber. But if I were going to pick a service round to replace the 556, I would pick the 6mm 223 or the 6x55, or the 6x45 rather. And the reason for that is the 223, the 5.56 is a good round, but I would like a little bit heavier bullet. And I know what those 6mm bullets can do to game because I've taken you know, m multiple elk with them. I know what they can do. And most people would say it's too small for elk, but I've got plenty of elk meat in the dirt that would say otherwise. And all it would take would be a barrel swap. So if you were looking at maybe you have a couple of ARs, maybe you're looking at that next cool build, or maybe you want to hunt with an AR, maybe that's your thing, and you want a round that does a little bit better, but still you don't have to get new mags, you don't have to get a new bolt, you don't have to do this thing or that thing. You can just literally put a new barrel on your AR upper that you already have, and you would have the 6mm two twenty three, and that would be great. Per Wikipedia, it's launching a 100 grain bullet at 2,650 feet per second, which is pretty respectable. And a 90 grain bullet, which I would also consider just fine for deer, at 2,800 feet per second. I do believe that's much better than you're going to get even a 75 or 77 grain bullet out of a 223, and you're getting it with a 90 grain bullet. Like I said, a lot of those 6mm bullets are made for hunting. Better terminal performance in an AR platform without getting crazy, without going. There's a lot of good rounds that do that, but you have to get a lot of other specialty stuff. With this is literally just a barrel swap. I remember years ago hearing competition shooters talking about it when I was doing three gun, the six millimeter 223. And it has its niches, it has its, you know, its followers and its fans. You can literally do this, like I said, with just that. And if you reload, you can just use 223 cases just take some fingernail polish and mark the bottom of the case so you don't confuse them. But once you fire them, they're pretty much already 6 millimeter in the neck. You just don't have to resize them as much. And they're good to go. With a barrel and a set of dies, you could be off and running. Some bullets, it likely takes the same powder that you're using for your 223. All right, with that, guys, perhaps you'll consider this for your next AR build or your next AR if you want to hunt with an AR. Or you want to get a little bit of an edge in competition. Barrel and a set of dies. Like I said, you're off and running with what you already have. And again, if, if I were going to pick, if it were my choice, which it's not, but if I were picking a new replacement service cartridge, probably be this one. Make it mainstream and adopt it. Get that 100 gram bullet. And for a recommendation, I have never owned this cartridge, to be fair, but I have like I said, done extensive big game hunting with a 243 and taken many animals with it. And my favorite hand load when I would load for it is an 85 grain Sierra Game King over top of a charge of Varget powder, which is a smart powder, which means it pretty much retains the same velocity, whether hot or cold, whatever the temperature is outside. Uh, Varget's a good powder. I like it. And I'm not going to give you specific load data, but I like it with the 85 grain Sierra Game King. It's a sledgehammer of a load to consider on the smaller end of big game hunting cartridges. And my experience enters, dumps all its energy, and stops just shy of the skin on the far side of the animal with a broadside shot. Tremendous internal organ damage, which I'm all about. I like putting animals in the dirt, recovering them, and eating them. With that, guys, I hope you've liked this episode of, I don't even know what I'm going to call this series yet, maybe Better Know a Cartridge. If you like this, you may like our full-length episodes of Gunfighter Life, so check those out on whatever podcast platform you want. iTunes, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, whatever. If you could scroll down and hit some stars and give us a good review, that'd be great. Be greatly appreciated. If you want to check out more, your one-stop shop for that is GoodShepherdTraining.com. That's GoodShepherdTraining.com. You can contact me on there. You can support the podcast on there. You can check out a couple of other really good podcasts on there. The Alpha Male Podcast, where we talk about being an alpha male today. 
and Simple Man Sermons, the preachings of a simple man called by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And again, you can find those on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on, or you can just check us out at goodshepherdtraining.com. With that, guys, thanks, and have a blessed day.